So you've probably seen the headlines. In just the last six months, NVIDIA has been on an absolute tear, making these massive, almost crazy investments. And it's left a lot of us, myself included, kind of scratching our heads and asking, what is their real end game here? Well, today we're gonna piece this puzzle together and see if we can figure out NVIDIA's master plan. It's a huge question, right? But it's exactly the right one to be asking. Because what we're seeing, these aren't just random stock purchases. No, this is a calculated, deliberate strategy. This is empire building 21st century style. And it seems like the whole thing revolves around one almost unbelievable number, $100 billion. Yeah, you heard that right. That's the figure that's reportedly tied to a deal with OpenAI. And believe me, it is the key to understanding the entire empire NVIDIA is trying to build. So let's unpack this grand strategy. But hold on, before we even get to that $100 billion headline, we've got to look at the other moves NVIDIA's been making. See, they've been strategically pouring money into four key companies, and each one is a critical piece of a much, much larger picture. So let's meet the players in this game. You've got Nokia for the telecom and networking piece, then their old rival Intel for computer processing, of course, the AI juggernaut itself, OpenAI, and finally, a specialized cloud provider called CoreWeave. Four super different companies, right? But as you're about to see, they're all part of one incredibly unified strategy. All right, so where does it all start? Well, like any good empire, it starts with the foundation. In this case, that means hardware. But this isn't just about NVIDIA's own GPUs anymore. Oh no, they're making moves to control every critical piece of the physical infrastructure that AI runs on. And here's how it starts to take shape. On one side, they've pumped a billion dollars into Nokia for networking, and on the other, a whopping five billion into Intel for processing. You gotta think of it this way. They're securing both the pipes that data flows through and the brains that do the thinking. So let's take the Nokia deal. For a cool billion dollars, NVIDIA is now their second largest shareholder. And what's the goal? They're working together on something called AI radio access networks. Now in simple terms, that means they're gonna embed AI processing right into 5G and 6G cell towers. It's a brilliant move, really. It extends their kingdom from the data center all the way out to the edge of the network. And listen, NVIDIA's CEO Jensen Huang is not being subtle about their ambition here at all. He's basically saying that by building these new AI native networks with Nokia, they're positioning themselves to be the engine for the next generation of how we all connect. It's a huge play. Okay, and then comes a real shocker, a $5 billion investment and their longtime rival, Intel. Now you might be asking, why on earth would they do that? Well, another big competitor, AMD, has been offering customers this one-stop shop for both CPUs, the main processor, and GPUs. This move completely neutralizes that advantage. It guarantees NVIDIA has a top-tier CPU partner that works perfectly with their own GPUs. It's a classic case of, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So NVIDIA's locked down the hardware foundation, the pipes and the brains. But, you know, having the best engine in the world is totally useless if you don't have any fuel. So the next part of this strategy is all about making sure there is a constant, absolutely massive demand for all that hardware. And here's the kicker. They're not just waiting for it to happen, they're creating that demand themselves. And that brings us right back to that jaw-dropping number, $100 billion. This isn't just an investment. You have to see it as the fuel for a self-sustaining fire of AI demand. And it's all pointed at one company, OpenAI. Now, to get this, there's a key concept you have to understand. It's called circular financing. And it's a really clever, some might even say audacious strategy. It basically works like this. NVIDIA invests a ton of money in its biggest customer, and that customer then turns around and uses that exact same money to buy NVIDIA's products. It's a beautiful self-fueling loop. And hey, it's not just me saying this. The analysts have totally caught on. This one quote just captures it perfectly. NVIDIA is literally recycling its own cash to create a guaranteed customer, which then amplifies the whole AI boom that, you guessed it, benefits them the most. It's kind of brilliant. So here's how it plays out in the real world. NVIDIA gives OpenAI the money to build out these gigantic data centers. In return, OpenAI names NVIDIA its preferred partner. And boom, you've just created a guaranteed sales pipeline for millions of NVIDIA GPUs. The billions that NVIDIA invests come right back to them in the form of sales. It's a perfect feedback loop, all designed to supercharge the race to artificial general intelligence. But it's also a massive bet, right? They're trying a huge chunk of their future to the success of just one AI company. 
Okay, so check this out. They've got the hardware foundation locked down. They built this incredible engine to create their own demand. But there's one last, absolutely crucial piece of the puzzle. How do you actually get all of that incredible computing power into the hands of everyone who wants to use it? And the answer to that question is a company called CoreWeave. You can think of them as the critical delivery network. They are the final link, the last mile, that connects NVIDIA's powerful hardware to thousands of developers and startups out there. Now, NVIDIA's play with CoreWeave is just genius. First, they own a major stake worth over $3 billion. But the real masterstroke is this backstop agreement. NVIDIA has guaranteed to buy up to $6.3 billion of any unused cloud computing time from CoreWeave. This basically takes all the risk off CoreWeave's shoulders and ensures there's a thriving, loyal cloud ecosystem built completely around NVIDIA hardware. So let's pull all these threads together now. When you stop looking at these four investments as separate bets and you start looking at them as a whole, well, that's when they start to look like the pillars of a true 21st century tech empire. And here it is, the grand strategy all in one place. It's a perfectly integrated four layer stack. You've got Nokia handling the networking, Intel for the core computing, OpenAI is the AI brain creating all the demand, and CoreWeave is the delivery network. And right in the middle of it all, pulling all the strings is NVIDIA. They have influence at every single layer. And when you look at the numbers all side by side like this, you can really see the logic and the scale of what they're doing. The investments range from a billion in Nokia all the way up to that potential 100 billion in OpenAI. And every single one has a crystal clear goal that fits perfectly into building out that integrated AI stack. What's really fascinating is how NVIDIA is balancing its risk here. On one side, you have these safer bets on established, profitable companies like Nokia and Intel. That's to secure their hardware foundation. But on the other side, you've got these high-risk, high-reward moonshots on fast-growing but still unprofitable companies like OpenAI and CoreWeave. That's to create and capture all the new demand. So if there's one thing to take away from all this, it's this. NVIDIA is not just a chip company anymore. Not even close. They are methodically building an entire integrated ecosystem where they have influence and a financial stake in every single critical layer of the AI value chain. So why does any of this matter? Because NVIDIA isn't just playing for next quarter's earnings report. They are trying to cement their dominance for decades. By weaving together hardware, software, and the cloud, they are building a technological fortress. The goal is simple, to make their ecosystem so powerful, so integrated, that it becomes completely indispensable for the future of artificial intelligence. And all of this, it leads us to one final massive question. We've just looked at the blueprint for a new kind of empire, one built not on land or armies, but on silicon, data, and pure intelligence. So when one company has this much power, this much influence over every single layer of the AI stack, what happens next?